Oh, it's flimsy. What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. How are you all doing today? A question that has been asked on my Twitter and Instagram quite a lot is what is better, the A1 or this? And what we're gonna be doing is putting both of them to the test in terms of comfort, overtaking, fuel, storage space, and a lot more everyday things that we're gonna be using both this car and the A1 for. So let's start with just how easy this car is to get into. As you can see, this car sits very low to the ground. The seat is difficult. So you fall about this much to sit into the car. So getting in and out is a lot more effort. Unlike the Lamborghini where you have to get right down low to the ground, it is as simple as pie. Very comfortable. I don't think that's a saying. <laughs> what? As simple as pie. <laughs> The great reason why I bought this A1 in the Estronic gearbox is it makes town driving very easy, very smooth, also has start-stop technology which is absolutely fantastic and when you come to a dead end when there's a car in front of you, it is very easy to do a three-point turn with such an amazing turning circle, yes! Town driving in the Lamborghini can be quite tricky. Four wheel drive system doesn't make it a good maneuver around tight spaces. However, it does have nose lift, but when you come to a three point turn, just forget it. No, really, just forget it, I'm not doing one. I'm, I refuse to do a three point turn in this car, it's too difficult. The blind spots are everywhere. The great thing is, being such a small car, you can park right outside your favorite stores at ease. One way, <laughs> she's going the other way. True. Now I'm going in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent day. And done. Unfortunately, I don't like parking close to cars in case doors are opened or this car gets scratched so I basically have to park as far away from the shop as possible regardless of whether there are spaces here we have to go all the way around here If we're going to talk about fuel economy, the Audi A1 smashes the Lamborghini out of the park. As you would expect, we're currently averaging over 40 mpg. And in eco mode, you can get well over 60, which is fantastic. Although, when you're filling this car up, it only has a small fuel tank, which means that it, you are going to be spending £40 to get a full tank out of this, which will get you about 420 miles. If we're going to compare that to how much fuel you'll put in the Lamborghini, which is over 85 litres, this car will get well over 1,100 miles out of that sort of fuel range. In the Lamborghini, however, the fuel economy isn't quite as good. We're currently doing 18 miles to the gallon, which may be quite good if you're thinking about a supercar and a Lamborghini usually does between five and 10 miles to the gallon. However, it costs around 100 pounds to fill up and you get around 400 miles, driven sensibly. If you wanna go for a bit of a hoon, you're looking at less than 100 miles. Bad times. Let's do a bit of an overtake challenge. In the Audi A1, this has got 125 PS, which is great, when you're already maintaining a speed on a dual carriageway, you might need a bit more extra oomph to overtake something. Here we go. Come on, overtake. Ah, oh, thanks. She broke, which enabled me to overtake. <laughs> now, one of the pros to the Lamborghini is it's 560 brake horsepower. So when it comes to the overtaking challenge, You can overtake pretty much any car you want. One thing that is vital with a city car is its storage space for things like shopping or me. Let's see whether I can get in the boot. 
I reckon so. Ooh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's test the storage facility in the Lamborghini. As we know, it's a two-seater, but let's have a look in the front and see whether I can get in the boot. Oh, it's flimsy. Oh. Oh. Hmm, not that good actually. <laughs> What sticks a nail into the coffin of the Lamborghini is the running cost of this beast. Now I know it looks fantastic, but the costs are absolutely minimal. And because it's brand new, everything, or pretty much everything, is under warranty. So if I ever have a problem with the car, I can throw Audi the keys and they'll sort it out at no cost whatsoever. The overall running costs of a Lamborghini are hard to think about, even though I've only owned this for three weeks. I do know that the clutch replacement costs around 6,000 pounds, full set of tyres costs near enough two and a half, three thousand pounds and a general service costs between one thousand and fifteen hundred quid. Insurance can be as much as ten thousand pounds depending on your age which is extortionate. Unlike the Audi this can be quite nerve-wracking to drive around just because of how expensive it is. So there we have it a light-hearted video I hope you've enjoyed please give it a thumbs up if you like the Lambo or the Audi um, and make sure that you subscribe if you're new thank you very much for watching and as always for supporting um, I think overall the Audi one even though I prefer to take the Lamborghini out every single day but I will see you tomorrow for a reaction video with Seen Through Glass yes <laughs> they're getting confused because it's the same order they didn't know whether there was a duplicate order or whether they ordered it wrong at the last window sorry about that you did the same order. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. How many sugars and how many milk shall I give to you? Pardon? How many sugars and milk for your tea? No, uh, none, please. Nothing. Nothing. Thank you.